Get over there, Jalen. Okay, so there were two problems on your pretest, and I showed answers, but I didn't explain how to do it. I said today we'll, we'll take the whole day to do it. Um, so this is it. So it's factoring quadratics. This is a trinomial here. It's got one, two, three terms in it. When A equals one. So factoring, by definition, is kind of given here. It's just rewriting an expression. as a product of several factors. Baden, can you put your device away? Does anybody else have a device? Oh, I just haven't announced him. Everybody get their stuff put away? Okay, so it's rewriting expression as a product of several factors. So you're beginning with the standard form. So what we're doing is we're starting with this, and we're working backwards to this. So this was double distribution. We ended up here. Today, we're going to start here and put it back into the factored form. You want to kind of easily be able to move between these two forms. So the trick is First off, let me highlight this. The number in the very front is called A. The number in the middle is called B. And the last one is called C, A, B, C. This whole worksheet, A equals 1, and B and C are really important. So our trick is finding two numbers that have a product of C and a sum of B. We want numbers that will multiply to the last one, the constant, and add to the middle one. Then we're just going to put these numbers in parentheses with the given variable. So in our first example, let's identify A, B, and C. A is invisible. There's an invisible one in front. When there is no coefficient, you got your invisible one. What's B, you guys? 14. And what's C? 48. So it's the 14 and 48 that are important. Here they are if you didn't see them. Step two, consider all the numbers that multiply to C. So there's lots of numbers that multiply to 48. We very specifically want the two numbers that add up to be 14. So I'll just be completely honest with you, the kids in the room that come up with multiplication tables the quickest, they go through this the most quick. If you don't come up with them quickly, it doesn't mean you can't do it. So let's talk about what numbers do multiply to 48. 6 times 8 is 48. True. And what is 6 plus 8? 14. Those are the exact numbers we're looking for. It's like a riddle. You found the numbers. Once you find the numbers, you're just going to stick them in parentheses. Use the variable in the problem. And that's factoring. It's like a riddle. It's like Sudoku. Did I say that right? Sudoku? This is really big for a little while, and now it's not, huh? All right, we're going to skip this middle matching. We'll come back to it another time. Yeah, there. Then it cannot be factored. So if you can't find the numbers that work, you're just going to write cannot be factored. And there's definitely they're definitely out there. Okay, good question. Who else has a question? 
Yes. Yes. Sorry, this is an X. So to answer your question, you can put eight here and six here, and it's the same thing. Totally right. Thank you. Who else has a question? Yeah. Oh, uh, it's whatever's given. Like on this one, these are Ys. The answer would be Y. Okay. We do get in the habit of just writing X's. I'm not one to like mark you completely wrong if you like put the wrong variable or something. Just match it to the problem. Skip the middle. Let's come down to number one. Do the steps. Step one was to identify A, B, and C. A is one. What is B in this problem? 10. What is C in this problem? So we need to find numbers that will multiply to 21. And we'll add the 10. This one's number one because we've got a whole lot that multiplies to 21, yes? Seven times three is 21. Seven plus three is 10. That's our riddle. Our answer, X plus seven, X plus three, and it doesn't matter what you put first. In this box for this entire handout, I'm requiring you to check. I don't make you check a whole lot, but for this handout, you're checking. And to check it, you put it into standard form. So we're going to do what we did in bow work and what we did yesterday. We're going to do X times X, X times three, seven times X, seven times three. When you check, you get what you started with and you know you've done it right. The best math problems are ones that you can check and know you have right. You're not wondering if you got it right or not. I get it right. You are not required to write everything I'm writing. Okay, I read all this. It's helpful though if you're not sure, you know. Okay. What do we know multiplies to 16? 4 and 4 do. Yeah, yeah. 4 and 4 was my first thought. But 4 plus 4 is 8 and not 10, so 4 and 4 do not work. So I'll go to the next one. I'll try 8 and 2. Eight times two is sixteen. Eight plus two makes ten. Those are the numbers I want. I ran out of room.
Okay, you guys can flip over and keep working. This is the answer. This is the only thing that's actually required. Well, and you're required to check on here. But typically, if you're asked to factor, you can do it in your head. You can just write that down. The more you do it, the more quickly the numbers come. It's a lot about just doing lots of repetitions. And then as soon as you start to see minus signs, it gets more difficult. Is the next one subtraction? Fourteen. That looks like one that can't be factored. Anybody else agree? Don't stare at it too long. Can't. Yeah, I mean, no, no, you can't. If it can't be factored, it can't be checked. Well, if you know the quadratic formula, you could do the quadratic formula. We'll get to that whole business um, like November we'll revisit the quadratic formula if you guys remember that and then it pops up here and there so I'm gonna go with three I'm thinking of 15 and 2 and 6 and 5 and 10 and 3 cannot be factored Here we go. Here's a minus sign. As soon as you start seeing minus signs, it gets more complicated. Okay, so A is 1. B is a negative 8, specifically negative 8. C is 7. So this time, I want to multiply to a positive 7 and add to a negative 8. Good thing seven's prime because there's not a whole lot that we have to think about. Anybody know the answer? Call it out. You know what? Say negative one, negative seven. So you start to pick up on patterns. Two negatives will multiply to be a positive seven. Right? So you want to consider maybe both factors are negative. Negative 1 times negative 7 is a positive 7. And negative 1 minus 7 is negative 8. So if you're trying to get to a positive 7, it's really only going to be a positive 8 or a negative 8 in there. If it's negative 8, both factors are negative. So the answer x minus 1, x minus 7 in any order. And I want you to check that still. Okay, I'm going to leave you guys to it. Over the weekend, you just have to finish this. Um, do your best. You know, do what you can to get, like, progressively more challenging. You're going to want to consider both plus and positive and negative factors. Feel free to work together. And we'll go over it on, on Monday. So, I put off yesterday's homework. I'm going to go over two assignments on Monday yesterday's assignment and this worksheet okay i felt really rushed I felt really rushed with passing out books and everything so i just i didn't do it we'll do it monday
Um, there's more. Thank you. Yeah. 